stay in the NFT space long enough and soon enough you'll encounter a rug pull. What exactly is a rug pull and how can you go about protecting yourself from this type of scam? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the NFT Brief. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a rug pull that caught me out and I'm also gonna talk about some tactics and strategies that you can use to avoid being victim to a rug pull. Hope you enjoy the content in this video all about NFT rug pulls. If you do, please subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos like this. And of course, please remember, I'm not a financial advisor. The content in this video is for informational purposes only. And as you're about to see, NFTs are incredibly risky. So please do your own research using advice like this. First up, let me set the scene. If you're not familiar with the concept, a rogue pull basically means that the NFT project in question suddenly stopped. The investors or the early minters or the NFT traders lost money or lost eat, while the scammers either disappeared or profited big time. It's not a new occurrence in the cryptocurrency world. You'll encounter lots of shit coins and altcoin projects where people just simply stopped working on it once they'd made enough money or that the whole thing was a scam and there was nothing behind it. But rug pulls in the NFT space are particularly unique and they require a little bit of extra due diligence to get around them. There are multiple types of NFT rug pulls that you should be aware about. One of the most high profile rug pulls of the past year or so was from the Frosty's NFT collection. Now according to, or according to multiple news stories, including this one on ZDNet.com, the project creators, who were about 20 at the time, were arrested after creating an NFT project and then disappearing with all of the Ethereum and posting a message on the project's original Twitter profile, basically saying, I'm sorry. So a project like this is a classic rug pull whereby people ramp a project up, share information about it, generate hype, dangle the prospects of making money or eat, and then run away with all of the earnings. The project itself, Frosties, was since uh, taken charge of by the Frosties community itself. Although if you go onto the Frosties NFT page, you can see the floor price certainly hasn't uh, recovered. So that's one example of a high profile rug pull that you can find information about on any NFT news website. The next type of rug pull to be aware about is when an NFT creator or the NFT project loses interest in the project or stops working on it for various reasons. And the people who bought into the project, I suppose, lose their eat because the NFT itself becomes worthless. As an example, this is Moose Tracks. This was an on-chain NFT project based on Anonymous that minted in the autumn of 2021. You can see that it had 10,000 items and 945 owners. I was one of these 945 owners who took a chance and bought this NFT. At one point it went up to 0.3 each, so it was actually worth quite a bit. It was worth nearly $1,000 for one of these. Now they're pretty much worthless. There was an active Twitter account where they were posting regular updates on the project up until I think it was December of 2021. There was also an active Medium blog all about the direction of the project. But then at the end of the year, uh, just before the NFT bear market, they published this update where they said that the launch of Custom Moose was a disappointment and that the Moose Tracks team has decided to stop working on the project because Custom Moose fell below their expectations and there's a lack of interest and a lack of sales. They talk about how pro proud they are of the project and how they're going, they don't have the resources to support long-term development and how they're moving on to uh, other Web 3.0 projects. Now, uh, I suppose that leaves people who hold this NFT with something that's pretty much worthless. So in other words, sometimes you can buy into an NFT and I suppose it's like taking a chance by buying a stock or a share uh, or a penny stock or a penny share. It just doesn't work out, in which case you've lost your funds. Not necessarily something malicious, but you know, it is a way that you can get rugged. In January of this year, the Yazuki NFT was one of the biggest mints and remains one of the blue chip projects in the space. Well, in May, there was a big scandal when Zagabon.eat, who was one of the project uh, creators, uh, was revealed to have been involved in other NFT projects that are regarded by the community as rogues. Projects that were called out by the community in, uh, as Zagabon's previous failed projects were attendees, CryptoZunks, and CryptoFunks, which was a parody of CryptoPunks. Now, uh, Zagabon.eat posted a rebuttal or an explanation on Mirror.xyz, which is a platform for writing that's used in the Web 3.0 space. He talks about how Funk uh, was a community-driven project and that he's no longer involved with it, and how some of the other projects were uh, basically learning experiences that he's used to go ahead and build uh, Azuki. Whether you believe in that or not, I suppose depends on how bullish you are in Azuki. Uh, and while there was a drop in the Azuki floor price, uh, since then, if we go back to Azuki, uh, we can see that it's still holding strong 
as one of the uh, blue chip NFT projects despite the current NFT bear market. So as you can see, uh, sometimes a project owner or project creator will be involved in other projects that are perceived as rugs or are perceived as failed projects, but that doesn't necessarily mean their next project is going to be a failure, particularly if it's a big one like Azuki. So it really is a complex area that you need to dig into when you're researching what a rogue pull is and if it's an outright scam or if it's a case of a failed project or something else. To be honest, one of the most frustrating things about rogue pulls and NFT scams is how hard it is to spot the fraud from what's legit in advance. A project can look like it's planned quite well, that even trained eyes and those involved in the NFT space can't see any red flags at first. The scammers tend to be organized and they will invest in marketing campaigns, or perhaps they're just creators who are ridiculously optimistic about what the project is going to do, or perhaps they've simply hired influencers or actors who are good at communicating what the project is all about. So what should you do if you're a sole NFT collector or if you're looking into the space for the first time? How can you spot a rug pull? Well, here's what you need to look for. Firstly, look out for teams that are undoxed. That is teams where you can't tell who they actually are. The biggest and most successful NFT projects usually have people who are well known in the crypto or NFT or digital art space. However, if you're on an NFT project and the entire team is anonymous and you do it with a Google desk research and you can't figure out who they are or the entire project just looks like it came from or came from nowhere, that could potentially be a red flag. Now sure, some projects uh, are created by teams who won't be doxxed until much later, like Yuga Labs, for example, that project launched long before we knew who the creators were. But it's often safer to buy or mint an NFT if it's from a team when you know who they actually are. One project that does this quite well is the Memeland project. You can see exactly who the team is, what they're involved with, and what they represent. And while not all of the team members are doxxed, you know, it does give a little bit of trust if you can actually see that there's somebody more than just a JPEG behind the collection in question. In fact, around the time I was recording this particular video, there was a story trending on Twitter about PseudoRare, which was a website for trading NFTs, which rug pulled uh, for $800,000. So it can show that when you're using a new platform or a new service in the NFT space, you can be taking on a huge amount of risk. In fact, I recommend that if you're buying NFTs or trading NFTs to stick to the legitimate platforms like OpenSea or Gem.xyz and so on, rather than relying on new platforms because you want to save a little bit of money or rather than relying on risky uh, over-the-counter trades where somebody could potentially rug you. Weird Discord and Twitter numbers. Good NFTs are based on a solid community. They're also based on social networks that have been built organically over time. So pay particular attention if the numbers in Discord don't align with the numbers on Twitter. Or if you suddenly see that a NFT Twitter handle came from nowhere to have hundreds of thousands of followers. Chances are they've used bots at some point. In fact, I actually recommend that you take the Twitter handle and plug it into a tool like botsentinel.com the next time you find an NFT profile with thousands of followers or a weird discrepancy between Discord members and Twitter follower numbers. Again, this can be a red flag that you can use to see if it's a rogue or not. A cheap website. One of the first things you'll notice after every big rogue pull in the NFT space is the website suddenly disappears and scammers will delete all social media channels and places that tie them to the fraud. They might even post a message uh, saying like, we've taken all your eat or I'm sorry. So when you're looking at a website, ask yourself how much time was invested in building this website. Does it look cheap and boilerplate or do the links work? Is there credible information about the team and the roadmap? Does the website demonstrate credibility and expertise? Again, the meme land and website does this quite well. So does the CyberKongs website and so do the websites about Board API Club and other blue chip NFTs. An unclear or carbon copy roadmap. Sometimes you go onto an NFT website and you'll see a roadmap if it's a picture for profile project or a project that represents a community. Sometimes these roadmaps are full of hopium. They're ridiculously optimistic. It's only when you start comparing roadmaps that you can see that they're often carbon copies of roadmaps on other NFT projects. So while it's great that an NFT project has a roadmap, if it's showing too much enthusiasm and unrealistic hyping, and if it's just relying on buzzwords like metaverse and so on, chances are it's simply a scam. Instead, ask yourself, what is this NFT project trying to do that differentiates itself from all of the other JPEG or picture for profile projects out there in the market? Because if there's no good answer to that question, it's probably not worth buying into. No partnerships with blue chips. The biggest NFT blue chips of the past few months include projects like Memeland and 
Moonbirds. Now, when a blue chip like this comes along, they always launch with a lot of fanfare because they've built partnerships with past blue chips or more established projects like Cyberkongs or Premint or Doodles or other NFTs that you will recognize. On the other hand, if an NFT project appears as if from nowhere, and they're not being mentioned in any of the Discord communities you're already in, you don't see any opportunities to win a whitelist or win a raffle to mint the NFT, chances are that they haven't uh, formed partnerships because they're not legit. And the other good thing about partnerships is the established projects like CyberKongs, of which I own one, will do a little bit of due diligence uh, before forming a partnership and announcing to their community that there's an opportunity to mint this NFT. And while the NFT mint could still go to zero, you can at least be assured that somebody has also researched the NFT project in question. So it can be something that you can use to support your own research before deciding whether to mint or skip. If you're minting an NFT and are asking for a ridiculous amount of ETH, chances are it's a rug pull or a scam. That's particularly true in the NFT bear market when the days of mints for three and four ETH are long over. So to put it in perspective, let's say that an NFT project is minting for one ETH, which is quite a lot in an NFT bear market. Now let's say it's a standard 10,000 picture for profile NFT collection. If the entire project mints out, that means that the project owners have made 10,000 ETH. At the time of recording this video, ETH is trading for $1,500. Assuming the entire project mints out, and bear in mind not all projects mint out, that means the project owners have made 10,000 by 15,000, depending on what way they've set up their contract. So that works out as approximately uh, $15 million. Now, I don't know about you, but $15 million should be more than enough for any project to execute on for years. How many people do does it take to run an NFT project, to launch a website and to realize a roadmap? So if you see a crazy mint price that's one ETH or more, chances are it's something that you need to ask serious questions about and perhaps find something that's a lot more affordable. Verify the NFT mint or project on Twitter. I always recommend taking a little bit of time to research the project on OpenSea and seeing if that verified blue tick symbol is present on the OpenSea page so you know that OpenSea have vetted the project. You can also search on Twitter to see if other people are talking about the project and what they're saying. Make sure they're not bots. Check it's actually verified accounts or actual accounts where people are posting legitimate comments and not just saying that this project is going to the moon or that we need to send Ethereum to this address or that they're smoking weed and buying NFTs. In other words, you're looking for meaningful, thoughtful engagement. I also recommend checking out the Twitter account at Rogue Pull Finder, who often tweets information about failed mints and rug pulls. So that way you can keep up. Wait till others mint or buy the NFT. Sure, a lot of money can be made in the NFT space if you mint an NFT before everybody else. But when you do this, you're often taking on a lot of risk. If you really want to get an NFT, you could just pick it up on the secondary market when you see that other people are buying it and that there's a little bit of volume and that the market is happy that it's not a immediate rug pull. Sure, the project could fail in a few months time or become a soft rug pull, but at least this way you know it's not an outright scam at the start. And while you might not necessarily get in on the ground floor, doesn't matter if the NFT really, you know, moons or reaches those prices or realize it's ridiculously optimistic roadmap. Look, the NFT space can be tricky to navigate. Some NFTs moon, some NFT projects fail. There's often no logic or reason. It always makes me laugh when I see people on Twitter posting charts uh, about particular NFT projects as if these were traditional stocks and shares. The reality is projects will fail or moon for a variety of reasons. Now, sometimes a project is an outright scam, which is why you need to do an extra bit of research compared to a stock or a share. And sometimes the project will simply fail a few months down the road because of lack of market demand, like what happened with Moose Tracks. So you always got to play it safe. And in fact, if you are going to play it safe, please, please stay safe in NFT land by using multiple wallets. You could use one software MetaMask wallet for minting those risky NFTs. And if it is a rug pull and something happens, well, you've only lost a little bit of ETH and well, hopefully not, but just the contents of your minting wallet. And then if you have an NFT mint that's worked out and you want to keep it for a few months, transfer it to a hardware wallet where it's safe and secure. And finally, have one additional wallet that's for cold storage where you can keep your comfy long-term holes that have a roadmap and funding to execute on for the long term.